When the Alcorian Empire first encountered the humans, they laughed uproariously, their scaly hides rippling with malicious mirth. These primitive apes, stumbling their way into the stars like toddlers just learning to walk, were a cosmic joke to the mighty Alcorians. The humans had barely mastered basic space flight, their ships little more than crude tin cans held together by spit and prayers, and yet they were already attempting to make contact with the rest of the galactic community. It was almost cute in a pathetic, feeble sort of way. Emperor Zoltar sneered with contempt as he watched the transmission from the human vessel on his grand view screen, his serpentine eyes narrowing to vicious slits. The creature addressing him was a male, tall and muscular by Alcorian standards, with pale pinkish skin and a scruff of coarse fur on its face like some unkempt beast. It spoke in its native tongue, a guttural, unsophisticated language that grated on Zoltar's auditory receptors. Before the ship's crude translator finally kicked in, Greetings, your eminence. I am Captain Marcus Dante of the United Earth ship Prometheus. We come in peace, seeking to open a dialogue between our worlds and establish mutually beneficial diplomatic relations with your great and glorious empire. Zoltar scoffed derisively, his forked tongue flicking out between his razor-sharp teeth like a whip. The unmitigated gall. Who did this presumptuous ape think he was to dare address the Supreme Emperor of Alcor directly as if he were some lowly clerk petitioning for an audience? These upstart humans needed to be swiftly and severely put in their proper place and taught to grovel before their clear evolutionary betters. You dare sully my divine presence with your mewling worm? Zoltar hissed with venomous hostility. You and your wretched kind are as less than nothing to the Alcorian Empire, fit only to be ground to dust beneath our glorious armored heel. We have long observed your pathetic, fumbling attempts at space travel and found your entire misbegotten species wanting in every respect. By every metric that matters, humans are a failed evolutionary experiment, a cosmic joke unworthy of drawing breath, let alone groveling pitifully at the feet of your superiors. Be grateful that in my infinite magnanimity, I do not order your home world burned to cinders and your species exterminated like vermin here and now for your audacious insolence. The human captain seemed momentarily taken aback by the sheer unrestrained vitriol of the hostile response. He blinked those small, beady little eyes of his in apparent confusion, as if struggling to process the depths of Zoltar's disdain, before finally marshalling himself to respond in a forcibly diplomatic tone that did little to conceal the growing umbrage seething beneath. I assure you, your majesty, no disrespect was intended. Humanity reaches out to you and your people in a spirit of peaceful coexistence and cooperation between our two civilizations. If we have given any cause for offense, I do humbly apologize. However, I must respectfully insist that silence your mendacious tongue, ape. Zoltar roared with apoplectic fury, slamming an armored fist against the ornate armrest of his massive obsidian throne with enough force to pulverize granite. You will cease this inane prattling or by the dark gods. I will have your species purged from the very face of the cosmos. You have a mere 10 rotations of your pitiful mud ball to withdraw every last trace of human contamination from Alcorian space and crawl back into whatever wretched midden you spawn from. Any human vessel detected in our sovereign territory after that time will be reduced to its component atoms with extreme prejudice. Now be gone from my sight, you loathsome simian, before I reconsider granting your kind such undeserved mercy and have your head mounted on a pike as a warning to the rest of your ilk. With a furious slash of his taloned hand, Emperor Zoltar severed the transmission, leaving a stunned and outraged Captain Dante staring impotently at a blank view screen his knuckles whitening as they clenched into fists of barely contained anger. The unmitigated arrogance of these primitives. The sheer suicidal folly. It was high time someone disabused the humans of their delusions of relevance and taught them the natural order of things. The Alcorians were the undisputed masters of the stars, and these jumped-up apes would submit to their betters or be crushed into cosmic dust. There could be no other outcome. True to Zoltar's imperious demands, within the span of 10 Earth solar days, the last human ships had withdrawn from Alcorian space with their proverbial tails tucked firmly between their legs. 
but not before a spate of mysterious accidents had befallen a number of their long-range exploration craft and observation probes under exceedingly suspicious circumstances, destroyed so thoroughly that not even wreckage remained to mark their passage. The Alcorian's message could not have been clearer had it been written in the blasted bodies of human crews. Crawl back into your cave, monkeys, and pray we do not venture to finish what we've started. As the years marched on in the wake of that disastrous first contact, tensions continued to simmer between the human and Alcorian civilizations, a seething cauldron of resentment and disdain that threatened to boil over at any moment. At every opportunity, Emperor Zoltar and his sycophantic lackeys seized upon the chance to viciously mock and belittle humanity on the galactic stage, holding the young species up as a laughingstock an object of derision and scorn. The emperor sneered at mankind's primitive technology, their short and stocky stature, their soft, weak, fur-covered bodies that seemed like such a cruel cosmic joke compared to the armored perfection of the Alcorian form. The only purpose humans could possibly serve is as mobile protein rations for our war beasts, or perhaps as self-replenishing doormats upon which to wipe the gore of their betters from the soles of our boots. Zoltar proclaimed to the raucous amusement of the Galactic Council. But while the Alcorians grew fat and happy off the delusion of their own innate superiority, secure in their unassailable position as the undisputed masters of the stars, the humans were quietly, secretly honing themselves into something different, something harder, something colder, something razor-edged and hungry for retribution. That disastrous first contact with the Alcorians had ripped the blindfold of naive optimism from humanity's eyes, exposing the harsh, unforgiving nature of the universe in all its callous brutality. Mankind could no longer afford to prance about the cosmos like wide-eyed children, ripe for subjugation or extinction at the whims of a hostile galaxy. If they were to survive and carve out a place for themselves among the stars, humans would need to become smarter faster, more adaptable and ruthless than any species that would grind them under its heel. Humanity would learn to embrace the cold equations of a dark universe and evolve or perish. And so, carefully hidden behind a veil of total secrecy, the Terran Alliance began a campaign of aggressive military buildup, determined to never again be caught with their guard down when the wolf came howling at their door. The finest human scientific minds were recruited from across the globe and given an unlimited black budget with which to close the gap between humanity and their arrogant reptilian nemesis. If the Alcorians were stronger and more durable, then mankind would craft armored exoskeletons in combat mecha that would more than level the playing field in raw strength and resilience. If Alcorian ships were more heavily armed and shielded, then human vessels would be stealthier, more agile, more innovative armed with esoteric weaponry designed to bypass reptilian defenses. The Alcorian legions were innumerable, then humanity would compensate with superior tactics, bleeding-edge technical force multipliers, and the kind of gritty, indomitable fighting spirit that could only be forged in a crucible of chronic adversity and existential threat. What the Alcorians, in their supreme arrogance, dismissed as meek submission and cowardice on the part of the humans was, in fact, a cold, calculated strategic realignment. Spurred on by the sneering contempt and hostility of the reptilian empire, humanity had at last found its true calling, its evolutionary niche in a harsh cosmos, not as diplomats or explorers, but as a civilization of soldiers, of survivors. The Alcorians believed that the ape men of Earth feared them. In truth, it was the humans who had finally learned the value of being feared, a lesson they would soon teach the scaled tyrants, even if it meant burning the galaxy down to ashes and rebuilding it in mankind's image. So let the Alcorian Empire gloat and posture while they could. Let Emperor Zoltar grow fat off the delusion of his own invincibility, while his cowed slaves and client races trembled before their reptilian masters. Humanity would watch and wait and prepare in secret sharpening its claws in the dark until the day that smug scaled face dared slap them one time too many. Then the Alcorians would learn to their eternal regret the depths of the frozen hell they had unwittingly consigned themselves to by earning mankind's undying enmity. That day of reckoning came sooner than anyone could have imagined, 
As the Alcorian Empire's limitless arrogance and disdain for their lessers finally boiled over into naked aggression. In an act of flagrant hostility that brazenly violated every tenet of interspecies law, warlord Zoran, a cousin of Emperor Zoltar, and one of the most feared commanders in the Alcorian military, launched an overwhelming invasion of a key human mining colony in the Balder system. Thousands of defenseless human civilians were brutally beaten and dragged, screaming from their homes, forced into squalid labor camps to toil like slaves under the merciless Alcorian lash. Any colonists who dared resist this wanton violation were publicly tortured to death, their flayed and crucified bodies left to rot in town squares as a gruesome warning to their fellows. It was a cruel, brazen act of unprovoked barbarism, practically daring the Terran Alliance to respond with more than a token toothless protest. The warlord Zoran, anointed the Butcher of Balder by his own troops, sent a sneering audio transmission to the Terran Alliance High Command, making absolutely certain that his cruel, reptilian visage loomed large on every vid screen. Beg and grovel all you like apes, but it will avail you nothing. You had your chance to bow to the Alcorian Empire as loyal slaves, and yet you dared to believe yourselves our equals. This is your reward for failing to grant your masters their proper respect. And I assure you, this is but the merest taste of the suffering we will inflict on your pathetic species if you continue to test our patience. Kneel before your Alcorian overlords and surrender your worlds to our glorious rule. And perhaps, if you amuse us sufficiently with your groveling, your lives may be spared to toil eternally in our minds as you were always destined. Zaron's mocking laughter echoed across the comm channels, even as a great cry of dismay rose from the billions of human beings watching in impotent horror as their defenseless kin suffered and died light years away. The Terran Alliance Council was paralyzed with indecision, terrified of the consequences of a war with the nigh-invincible reptiles. Even as public opinion back on Earth screamed for blood, for justice, for retribution at any cost. But when the official human response to the Butcher's ultimatum came at last, it was not with the anemic platitudes and diplomatic appeals that the Alcorian High Command had expected from the spineless apes. No, what appeared on every Tritanium vid screen from the halls of power to the most far-flung colony was no broken pleading primate or preening politician hoping to avoid bloodshed through appeasement and empty concessions. It was Admiral Alex Stark, Supreme Commander of the Terran Alliance Combined Fleet, his eyes blazing like binary stars, his voice rolling through the speakers like the thunder of Armageddon itself. The scarred, grizzled veteran fixed the Butcher of Balder with a stare of pure, distilled hatred. And in that moment, every human across the galaxy stood with him as one. To the murdering scum of Alcor, Stark snarled, his face gaunt and terrible in the harsh light of the vid screen. For decades, you reptilian bastards have spat on our overtures of cooperation, answered our pleas for stability. With violence, gleefully enslaved and massacred innocent human families on a whim. You think the sons and daughters of Earth weak, cowardly, beneath your contempt. Hear me well then, you scaly sacks of shit. What we are is done. Done with your arrogance. Done with your unprovoked bloodshed. Done with your delusions of racial supremacy. Done with being the galaxy's whipping boys and convenient targets. As of this moment, by unanimous consent of the Terran Parliament and the full backing of all humanity, I am officially declaring total war on the Alcorian Empire. Stark roared, slamming an armored fist onto the podium, his bared teeth flashing in the strobing red alert lights of his flagship's bridge. We will not stop until every human colonist is free from your clawed clutches, until every drop of innocent blood is repaid tenfold, until your wretched species is driven screaming back to the slimy space rock that birthed you, to every free world, every civilization that has suffered under the Alcorian boot. Join us now, throw off your shackles, rise up against your oppressors. You have nothing to lose but your chains. And to the arrogant Emperor Zoltar and all his sycophantic lackeys, I say this. You have sown the wind, now reap the whirlwind. Before this day is done, it is you who will kneel. It is you who will grovel before us and beg for the mercy you denied our people. Humanity is coming for you, monsters. And by all the gods and devils of the galaxy, you will rue the day you fucked with the human race. 
Humanity, fuck yeah. The assembled Alcorian court gaped in shocked disbelief as the transmission cut out to the sound of billions of humans roaring in unified bloodthirsty approval. For the first time in their empire's long history, the reptiles knew true fear. The war was swift, brutal, and hopelessly one-sided in humanity's favor. Zoltar realized his fatal error within the opening hours of the conflict, as reports flooded in of human warships tearing through the Alcorian lines like tissue paper. Their primitive weaponry had advanced by leaps and bounds, eclipsing the Empire's own arms which had stagnated from lack of serious challengers. And while each Alcorian ship required a full crew to operate, Earth had perfected advanced automation, needing only a handful of crews to achieve the same effectiveness. One human frigate was worth a dozen Alcorian battlecruisers. Mankind's ground forces were even more terrifying to behold. Towering, ten-foot-tall humans clad in hulking, juggernaut power armor waded through storms of Alcor plasma fire without even flinching, their grav hammer blows crumpling Alcorian skulls like rotten grapes inside their helmets. Elite Spectre infiltration units slipped invisibly through the reptiles' lines, sowing chaos behind them. For every human that fell, they made the lizards pay a hundredfold in blood. World after world fell in rapid succession. Human forces liberated the camps on Baldur III in the opening moves, avenging the innocent colonists with such jaw-dropping brutality that broken Alcorian soldiers were surrendering by the thousands just to escape mankind's wrath. Not even the fortified Imperial capital was safe. Within a month, Earth stood poised to conquer the last Alcorian strongholds. Emperor Zoltar barricaded himself in his throne room quaking in his scales as he watched his glorious empire crumble before the human onslaught on a dozen viewscreens. A new transmission from Admiral Stark appeared on each one, causing the once proud emperor to emit an undignified squeal of fear and soil himself. How's the view from up there on your high horse now, you son of a bitch? Stark sneered coldly, a cruel smile playing over his lips. Doesn't feel so good to be the one pissing yourself in terror, does it? Your mighty Alcorian empire is done, you scaly fuck. We're coming for our pound of flesh now, and you're first in line to pay up. Your majesty, I'll see you real soon. Zoltar shrieked as the human battle fleet appeared in orbit above the Alcorian homeworld. The skull-faced profiles of their Reaper-class dreadnoughts blotting out the very sun. All Imperial comms were flooded with human heavy metal blasting at full volume an auditory assault that caused more than a few Alcorian soldiers to simply drop their weapons and run screaming. The Emperor turned to flee as human drop pods began hammering through his palace's defenses, only to find his way blocked by a hulking brute in slate gray armor. Commander Grendel, infamous for his brutality against the camps, grinned humorlessly down at Zoltar, cracking his knuckles with a grinding of servos. Despite himself, a warm trickle ran down the lizard's leg. Where do you think you're going, little emperor? Grendel spoke through his helm's grill, each word dripping with disdain. I thought you wanted to see us kneel, to hear us beg for your mercy. Well, we're here to collect, fucker, and you're going to be doing plenty of kneeling and begging before I'm done with you. Zoltar watched in horror as the juggernaut grabbed him by the throat faster than his eyes could follow, hoisting him to dangle helplessly in the air. More human titans filed into the throne room, securing the perimeter before parting to allow a large male to step into view. Admiral Stark fixed the Emperor with a bone-chilling glare. Well, 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 look what we have here, boys, a dickless little lizard who thought he could fuck with humanity and get away with it. He spat on the floor in contempt before turning his frigid eyes back to Zoltar's pleading ones. What's the matter, your highness? Scale Cat got your tongue? Let's see if we can't squeeze a few mewling excuses out of you before the end. He nodded to Grendel, steel in his gaze. Break him, but keep the bastard conscious. I want him to feel every moment of humanity's retribution. Zoltar's agonized screams echoed long into that bloody night as mankind took its rightful place as the undisputed masters of the galaxy. Never again would anyone dare insult the human race. Never again would any Xeno scum threaten Earth's children. This was their destiny, bought and paid for in the ruins of a shattered empire that had once mocked them. Humanity stood triumphant among the stars that day, 
screaming its battle cry for all the cosmos to hear forevermore. Humanity, fuck yeah!